up until now we have seen the case when there is a monopolist and he has just one plant but there can be also a case in which there is a monopolist and he has several plants so how does the analysis change there right so that is what we're going to look at it so um supposedly if there are different uh, plants of the monopolist so he will he necessarily produce everything in the plant which has the lowest marginal cost not necessarily and that's what we're going to look at it here so please write would the monopolist would the monopolist <coughs> produce all his output in the plant with lowest MC Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Right. So, supposedly, if there are two plants, the amount of output produced in plant one is Q1, and the amount of output produced in plant two is Q2. The total quantity of output which is produced is capital Q, which is Q1 plus Q2. Right which is Q1 plus Q2. Now, um, supposedly, now, because the, the monopolist is going to use both the plants, so he will be doing the joint profit maximization. Right? So joint profit maximization, uh, the monopolist maximizes the joint profits <clears throat> from both plants, right? So joint profit is profit from plant one plus profit from plant two. So profit from plant one is TR1, which is the function of uh, Q1, Q2. minus TC1, right? Minus TC1, Q1. I'll tell you why I'm writing this as a function of Q1, Q2, just wait. And TR2, which is again the function of Q1, Q2, minus total cost of plant 2, which is only the function of Q2. <clears throat> so this you can see, is nothing but pi 1. And this is what is pi 2. This is what is pi 2. Right? So, TR1. Why we are writing TR1, Q1, Q2 like this? Bhai, there is a monopolist who is He's a single one. I mean, he's, a, he's just one monopolist. So he's facing only one demand curve. No? So he'll be facing the demand curve maybe like this. P is equal to A minus capital Q. No? So that you can write as A minus Q1 plus Q2. So beta, you can see this now that P is the function of Q1, Q2. No? P is the function of Q1, Q2. So can I write it like this? Because what is TR1? P into Q1. No, price into Q1. But I can write P as a function of Q1, Q2. Into Q1. Minus. 
PC one Q, right? Similarly, uh, P is a function of Q one Q two. This is T R two is P into Q two. So P, which is given by the demand function, that is a function of Q one Q two into Q two minus T C two Q two minus T C two Q two, right? So this right while. So as far as price is concerned, right, price is going to be affected by the quantity produced in each plant. Because bhai, mera market to ek hi hai. I just have one market. It is other thing that I am producing in other plant in, in two different plants. So depending on the quantity which is going to be produced in uh, both the plants, meri, mera price to affect hoga beta. Theek hai? To chahe tumha, maali chahe, किसी एक प्लांट में ज्यादा प्रोड्यूस हो गया किसी में कम प्रोड्यूस हो गया अल्टीमेटली मेरी टोटल क्वांटिटी तो अफेक्टेड होगी ना देन दैट इज गोइंग टू बी अफेक्टिंग द प्राइस सो प्राइस इज गोइंग टू बी अफेक्टेड बाय द क्वांटिटीज ऑफ बोथ द प्लांट्स बट द कॉस्ट इज गोइंग टू बी अफेक्टेड ओनली बाय द क्वांटिटी व्हिच इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर प्लांट सो दैट इज द डिफरेंस राइट सो प्लीज राइट व्हाइल पी क्यू1 क्यू2 is affected by the units produced in each plant, right? the total cost in each plant depends only on the units produced in that particular plant. Produced in that particular plant, right? So it's come the way that if there is plant one, so plant one's cost is going to be affected by the quantity which is produced in plant one. It is not going to be affected by the quantity which is produced in plant two. That is not there, right? So I can write the profit as this. I can take a P, Q1, Q2 common. Into, you can see now, it is Q1 plus Q2 minus TC1, Q1. Minus TC2 Q2. So there will be two first order conditions. First with respect to Q1, other with respect to Q2. So del pi by del Q1 is first function as it is into derivative of the second function with respect to Q1, that is 1, plus second function as it is into derivative of the first function with respect to Q1. Right? Minus del c1 by del q1 equals to 0, right? Okay. And what is del pi by del q2? First function as it is into derivative of the second function with respect to q2 is 1 plus second function as it is 
into derivative of the second function, uh, sorry, derivative of the first function with respect to Q2 is del P by del Q2 minus. Right? So what is this? This is MR1. Anna? What is this? This is MC1. What is this? This is MR2. What is this? This is MC2. Right? Uh, now, so the condition becomes what? If del P by del Q1 is equal to del P by del Q2, if this is same, then MR function is also same. MR1 is equal to MR2, right? So, if MR1, MR2, they will be equal. Uh, so, let's say that is equal to MR then, right? That will be equal to MR then. Uh, so, the condition of the equilibrium is going to be because MR1, MR2, MR ke barabar hai, that will become MR equals to MC1. equals to mc2. Achha, ye kab ho sakta hai? <clears throat> Say if you have, uh, if p is equal to what? 20 minus capital Q. Aise hai, right? Or that is uh, 20 minus q1 minus q2. Aise hai. So in that case, your del p by del q1 is also minus 1 and del p by del q2 is also minus one. But if del P by del Q1 is not equal to del P by del Q2, right? Agar wo same nahi hai, then the condition becomes MR1 equals to MC1. And MR2 equals to MC2. Ye kab ho sakta hai? You might have it like this. P is equal to, let's say, 20 minus Q1 minus half Q2. Because in that case, what del P by del Q1 is going to look like? Minus 1. And del P by del Q2 is going to look like what? Minus half. So these are different. And because these are different, then uh, you have the condition MR1 equals to MC1 and MR2 equals to MC2. So if del p by del q1 and del p by del q2 are not same then the condition is this if they are same then the condition is this right uh huh so this is about the multi plant monopolist hmm? thank you beta.